So this is um, Laurie McCusker from uh, the Fermanagh Trust. Laurie, you've been doing some interesting work over the last couple of years around wind wind farms in Fermanagh. You just kind of lay out the how that's come about and just give us a little bit of background on it. The, the Fermanagh Trust has been involved in, in, in managing the wind farm fund and, and giving guidance and support to uh, wind farm developers on, on, on grant making in local communities. So when you say grant making, it's giving out money to local communities, really, it's, uh, on behalf of, 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 of the wind farm developers uh, to local projects. Um, this is to the community benefit model that, that wind farm companies have put in place to give something back to, to, to those communities in which the wind farms are based. And wh where does this model come from? Um, the been de de the model has been developed over the years, there's, there's, there's always been a relationship between developers and renewable energy developers, particularly in Northern Europe and local communities. In, in Northern Ireland, and in, 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 in Ireland, it's been a more recent development where uh, companies are starting to, 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 to leave something behind, or, or maybe on an annual basis during the, during the lifetime. Some companies are doing it, some companies are doing it too, uh, but others aren't, and some, some companies are doing it to a different scale. Uh, from each other. So typically, what what kind of money are we talking about here? Uh, in Northern Ireland, the, the best examples that we can find, uh, and there are very recent examples, uh, are maybe up to £2,000 per megawatt. But typically, what you'd see in Northern Ireland, if, where examples do exist, is about £1,000 per megawatt. So for a local community, depending on the size of the wind farm, you could be talking about uh, giving out grants of maybe, you know, Twelve to fifteen thousand pound per annum within the radius of where the wind farm is based, within maybe a five or ten mile radius. Okay, so and that's money that comes into a, a local organisation. It, it, it rather comes directly to an organisation like the Fermanagh Trust, and then is, is given out to local community of voluntary organisations like senior citizens clubs or play groups, or uh, you know to run education classes or environmental courses. Uh, or it could be gone directly between the wind farm developer and local communities themselves. It could be for you know school-based projects in, in the area in which the wind farm are based. A whole range of initiatives can be supported. So uh, from your point of view, you've done a, a summary report on, on all of this, looking at past practice from a number of point of views. What sort of conclusions have you come to? We, 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 we just looked at you know the role of, of, of developers, the roles of, of communities and, and the role of government both locally and regionally and we've looked at best practice elsewhere. So what we've come to the conclusion is, is that uh, communities here can benefit a great deal more both in terms of their working relationships with developers, in terms of community benefit funds but also in terms of community ownership models. There's some fantastic models particularly in, in, in uh, Northern Europe but also in GB and in Scotland, and what we've highlighted is, is, is some of those models and how they could be replicated here. So communities can really benefit, like significant benefits, not small annual grants, but significant benefits to that community ownership model. And create their own assets, presumably? It's, it's all about asset development, and, and you know, if, if, if a community owns a share in a wind farm, uh, you know, whether that's a, a you know a seven percent share, maybe a one turbine out of fifteen turbine wind farm, or maybe it's a forty percent share. Well, the income stream that comes from that, from from having that asset, is, is can be hugely significant. And we've seen that in small isolated rural communities in Scotland, where you know you can see half a million pound plus being going back annually as having a share in that asset into local community projects. So what happens to that money? That money goes out to, to you know, rather than looking to the European Union or the national lottery. It, it, you know, communities can look to themselves and say, okay, how do we utilise this money for the benefit of our community? We've seen examples of, you know, it could be playgrounds being built. We've got one example now where schools being built. You know, imagine not going to the state and asking the state for money to build their primary school. We're going to build it ourselves. You know, so it, it depends on the scale and size. It's going to, to help local communities. It could be for tackling fuel poverty in a local area, or it could be for general community benefits in, in terms of environmental initiatives, play initiatives or whatever. So you could describe this as some kind of a hyper-local tax on private private enterprise? Yeah, on the, possibly, but you know, wind, farm, wind farmers are coming into rural communities, uh, they're farming the wind, and what are they leaving behind? You know, so, uh, you know, it's changing, it's changing local communities as a result of having wind farms, environmentally, and you know, in, in particular. So what's, what's the payback for local communities? So in terms of um, 
yeah, you could describe one model, but the community ownership model is not about a tax. It's about you know, working in partnership. And is it, are these one-off payments, or um, do they come in over a, a long period of time? Uh, g generally over the lifetime of the wind farm, if, if there's payments going between a developer. So in small communities, we're talking about quite a lot of money? Potentially. Potentially. In Scotland, we're seeing you know, companies now are saying up to £5,000 per megawatt. If you've got a 20 megawatt wind farm, that's £100,000 per annum. But in Northern Ireland, if it's only a £1,000 per megawatt or £600 per megawatt, well, the difference is you know, between twelve and 15000 and 100,000, and that's the difference we're seeing between communities in Scotland and communities here in Northern Ireland. And you've been talking about tying this into, I mean, it's a big thing in the news just now about um, high, high fuel prices and fuel poverty. You know, how do we address fuel poverty? You know, uh, and all of these interesting debates on, you know, what is fuel poverty, how many fuel poverty. The bottom line is energy prices are going up, we know that, that's a fact. Uh, and, and whether it's shale gas or whether it's oil, the bottom line is prices are going up. So how do we help local people to, uh, tackle that? And one way of doing it is by you know really trying to tackle fuel poverty in each household. And so if we can, there needs to be we believe a direct link between energy and rural energy development, such as wind farms, and what that means. And so can there be a payback? And we think there can be a pay payback through energy efficiency initiatives, backed. Uh, to money secured to the private developments in rural communities.